And Gloria, I want to start with something uh, that Republican Senator Roger Wicker said yesterday about Biden's promise to appoint a black woman. Listen to this. It's exactly what Biden said he would do in his campaign. So he's just fulfilling a campaign promise. He told the whole world that's exactly what he was going to do. The irony is that the Supreme Court is at the very same time hearing cases about uh about this sort of affirmative racial <laughs> discrimination yes. and, 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 and while adding someone who is the beneficiary of, uh, of this sort of quote, uh, the, the majority of the court may be uh, saying uh, writ large, it's unconstitutional. We'll see how that irony works out. Gloria, do you think that whoever President Biden nominates is the beneficiary of affirmative racial discrimination? Not at all. You know, what's so ironic about this, we've had white male um, affirmative action for nearly 400 years um, by law and by violence, and yet we have now these black women who have Harvard, Yale, Princeton backgrounds who are looked upon as though everything they've gotten was given to them when they've worked hard. They're of the highest integrity, the highest intellectual mindset. And I, I think the other thing that needs to be understood here is that the first white female lawyer was a, a part of us back in 1869. She became a part of the bar. The first black female lawyer was in 1872. So the black woman has been a judge in 1939, a federal court judge in the 1960s, and these women are beyond reproach when it comes to their credentials. So yes, there, there's this old idea that she's going to be tainted by affirmative action, but no matter what this, this nominee is or does, they'll be tainted by something that someone comes up with to try to undermine their credibility. I find it notable that he hasn't noted any of their qualifications because he doesn't know who President Biden is going to nominate. So this seems like a, a blanket statement. Christine, before we look at, at the future and, and who's next on the bench, uh, we want to take a moment to look back uh, at the career of Justice Breyer. How would you describe his legacy? What mark has he made on the court? Yeah, I mean, he has a remarkable legacy he'll leave on the court. He's written so many leading majority and dissenting opinions uh, both on constitutional rights of abortion, free speech, equal protection. There's also some really important separation of powers cases. He's been a strong advocate for deferring to political branches of the government. So uh, he will leave a strong legacy in that sense. And now I kind of want to look at some of the early favorites uh, that President Biden might nominate. We have, we have a, a screen full of them, a lot of uh, shiny resumes, you could say. Uh, there's uh, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. She's an appeals court and judge, uh, appeals judge in D.C. Uh, notably, she was confirmed by the same Senate last year. Uh, Justice Leandra Kruger of the California Supreme Court, and a name that was confirmed as a potential nominee by the White House, a U.S. District Judge J. Michelle Childs. Uh, she's on South Carolina's federal court, very close to Trump ally uh, Jim Clyburn. Gloria, first to you. Out of all these impressive names and resumes, which ones stand out the most to you and why? Oh, they're all brilliant. I mean, Katanji, of course, on the Court of Appeals. When we think about our Court of Appeals, that's the court that's the, the closest to the U.S. Supreme Court. They take these appellate cases. My background is as a law clerk on a state court, as well as a, a court of, of uh, Eastern District, which is a trial court. And we always looked up to the Court of Appeals because that is so close to the Supreme Court. I think Judge Childs, of course, is amazing. Um, I've had a chance to interact with her on occasion for full disclosure. And, you know, these women, all of them, um, in the Second Circuit, we, we have um, Eunice Lee, Judge of the Second Circuit there. That's the New York Circuit. Um, these all are amazing people. Leandra Kruger. I mean, there's nothing about this, the background of these women that would prevent them from being excellent um, jur jurists on the U.S. Supreme Court. The only thing that's holding back any situation here for their, their ascent to the court is the fact that they are black, they are women, 
and that um, President Biden mentioned that he was looking forward to nominating a black woman because there is this void that based on history and the natural progression of things, these women should have been looked upon as, as potential candidates. And there were black women who were put forward during the Obama administration, too. So this is not just a last minute political game that's being played. And Christine, quickly, your thoughts on the potential uh, nominees. Yeah, I agree that uh, some of the top choices are exceptionally well qualified. If you look to Judge Jackson, she has sterling academic credentials. She was a clerk for Justice Breyer and did many years of judicial service. Um, Judge Leandra Kruger as well has extensive experience not only serving as a state Supreme Court justice, but she also served in the Solicitor General's office, argue many key cases before the Supreme Court, and is someone um, who uh, also clerked for Justice Stevens on the Supreme Court and also has sterling academic credentials. Uh, Judge Michelle Childs also has extensive judicial experience. It's a different type of judicial experience on the uh, district court, so she has trial court experience that might add an interesting type of professional diversity as well. And I think the fact that many of the leading contenders are judges will also make it an easier path for them to be confirmed. Uh, judges tend to be more mainstream than, say, a pick from the legal academy, which might be easier to brand as a, as a radical, potentially. And we should note we can expect a pick in a, a matter of weeks, early February at the earliest. Uh, we got to leave the conversation there, ladies. Christine Kexel-Chabot, uh, Gloria Brown-Marshall, thank you both.